That intake system is going to delete this whole box and go straight to that turbo. We're about to lay some pipe into this GTI. There's a bunch of pipes here. Oh, oil. Sounds pretty wicked. We got that whoosh. Uh, what's going on everybody? Rat Trenches is back for another video. Today we have some GTI content. As you can tell by the title, we have a bunch of piping to install. It's just going to clean up this engine bay and help a little bit with the throttle response. But before I get into that, I just want to shout out Dave from ECS Tuning. He made this video possible. He gave us a bunch of parts. So if you guys are going to be in the market for any kind of aftermarket parts for your European car like BMW, German cars, anything like that, uh, Volkswagens, Audis, check out ECS Tuning. I'll have the link down below. And of course, for today's installs, if you have a GTI and you want to get these parts as well, they'll be linked down uh, below. But enough of me talking, let's show you what we got. Alright, so we just made our way over here. As you can see, we're about to lay some pipe into this GTI. There's a bunch of pipes here. Uh, on this side of the blanket, we have the uh, cold air intake. And then on this side, we have the turbo muffler delete. We got the intercooler piping, the um, discharge and charge pipe which is going to just kind of increase that throttle response and just widen up the diameter and get rid of the stock pipes. But off first glance, you can see everything's kind of like a texturized finish. We kind of want to keep it uniform. Um, they do offer some carbon fiber things. And we just want to do the textured aluminum style. It's just going to be nice. So I think the first thing we're going to do for this video is just install the intake. And then we'll kind of jack up the car. And all this piping is in kind of different locations throughout the car. Some is going to be in front, some is going to be on the passenger side, and so on and so forth. So we're going to do the easy part first. And uh, we're going to show you guys the before clip we have. We have just a stock setup over here. And we have this little chachi, I don't even know if it's real carbon fiber or not, little air duct for the intake system. But overall, that intake system is going to delete this whole box and just kind of go straight to that turbo rather than having to go through this, through the air filter and down below. So we'll do some uh, before clips and how it sounds now and then we'll start the install. Since we're going to do the intake side of things first, uh, we're going to get this big engine cover slash air box out of the way. Um, you might have a different setup here. You might have the stock one, which goes to here. But in this case, we have an aftermarket one. And we didn't really even bolt that on. We're just going to take that out of the way. It's a tight fit in there. Yeah, huh? very tight fit. It's because it's another reason to upgrade. It's like. Jesus. That was just going in the garbage. Yeah, it might be a real carbon. It's very light. Yeah. I don't know though. All right. Maybe on second thought though. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to want to do is just kind of disconnect this mass airflow sensor. Get that out of the way. Disconnect these clips here. These are really easy to do compared to uh, most cars. We're going to take the whole thing out. And then this kind of just props up. There's a couple uh, little holes here and here and here, which go on to little things like that. And that's pretty much it for the uh, old OEM intake. And then we just gotta take off this pipe which goes down below to the turbo, which could be a little more tricky. Probably won't be able to see on camera, but um, we'll start hooking up the new one.
All right, so as you guys just saw, it was a super easy tutorial. I really didn't do a step-by-step -step because it would be just wasting each other's time. So kind of just cinematic style and B-roll. If you have any questions on how to install that, um, I'll link down below ECS is step-by-step -step tutorial. If, um, if that doesn't help you, you can always just shoot us a, a comment. But uh, just quickly overviewing it, it was a super, super easy job. It looks good. It's got a nice little flex here with this little adapter here. Everything is a snug fit. I don't think we'll get any rattles. I do like that heat shield, which is just going to prevent that turbo heat coming up to possibly heating this up and just, you know, you want to get as cold of the air as possible. You know, it's being channeled through here. Uh, but I guess we could start it up and see how it sounds. We'll crack the garage open so we don't die. And uh, let's, let's do that. That sounds a lot better. Yeah, you can really hear the, the difference. Let me close this garage. Actually, I'll let it air out so we still don't die. Um, but yeah, you could really hear it being pulled in. Imagine if we get a little spacer, a little blow off out just to kind of emphasize that, uh, you know, pressure and everything. I think it'll just sound so much more unique, but it creates a cool sound. I mean, I heard it from inside the car. It probably sounded cooler outside. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have a dyno sheet and what they've had done to the car. It's pretty much similar to what we have done to the car, stage one tune and their dyno. So it will gain us horsepower and then the real power is gonna come from the charge pipes, the turbo muffler delete and just getting rid of all the janky old OEM parts. So yeah, let's jack up this car and start tearing apart all the piping and start laying some pipe in. All right, so before we get into it, let's just kind of get an overview and kind of understanding of the parts that we got here. Um, so we got the uh, turbo outlet pipe here, and then we have the throttle pipe here. Um, pretty much, it's going to be set up like this. Here we're going to have our new turbo muffler delete here, which is going to go right to the turbo. That's going to come to this hose here, and then that hose is going to go on to the outlet pipe. And then this is going to go on to the intercooler. And then these are our little adapters, so these are going to go into here and then onto the intercooler um, outlet. So that's gonna be all for that side. So let's make our way to the uh, throttle pipe here. Um, we got our little hose here, which is gonna go on top, which is gonna connect right to the uh, throttle body itself. And then, of course, we have the bottom side, which is gonna go to the other side of the intercooler, of course, with this little coupler. So these are gonna go together and those are gonna go together and this is once again going to be another easy install. It's going to be a couple bolts here and there and a bunch of clamps. So we're going to do kind of like the style we just did for the intake. Um, we got the car up in the air. We are going to have to take this passenger side wheel off because we're going to have to remove the inner fender liner just to get access to where that um, outlet pipe is. So let's go ahead and take this wheel off and we'll get cracking. All right, so we're on the passenger side. And we got this lower fender liner out of the way and that freed up where we're going to be working. So essentially we're going to be removing this pipe here, which is the uh, outlet pipe and then the hose that goes straight to the intercooler, which is here. And then once we get under here a little more, we'll have you come up under here a little bit later is just the turbo muffler itself. So first things first, let's get these two screws out of the way. They're going to be T30. So we're going to cue the cinematics and we'll get going.
So as you just saw there, we got everything of the old parts out of the way. Um, we did take the turbo muffler off. The only thing that kind of sucks is you have to reuse that gasket. So we went ahead and put the new muffler delete in there and we reuse the old gasket. As you saw, we put that up. Um, another thing you're gonna have to reuse is the rubber grommets that go into this outlet pipe. So we're gonna have to put it in through this one. But in order to do that, you just kinda have to pry this little, it's a little tab like that. And then you'll be able to kind of get the bushing out. But let's see if we can do it backwards. Crack it. So that popped out. And we'll take out that little bushing. Boom. So now we are just going to have to install them on this one here. Might have to use a little WD-40 or lube if it's not working for you. But let's see if we can get it in there without it. And boom, let's make it flush. Perfect. So it's gonna sit like that and you're gonna have to reuse those two T30 bolts and they're gonna go through and hold it in place. So let's go ahead and put this one on and then we'll start doing the time lapse. All right, so now that we got that all buttoned up, we just got one more piece of the puzzle, including this little coupler and then the hose. So the coupler is just gonna sit in there with a little groove like that. So you're gonna have to reuse one of those little hose clamps, um, the OEM style from the previous setup. And that's just gonna go over there and lock this in place. So let's go ahead and do that. It's kind of tricky, but a little fooling with it, you'll be able to get it. about lining it up, that's all. That side's in, I gotta get the top side in. Use a little flat head, kind of pry it back and forth. You'll be able to get it, you'll hear it click in too. There we go. So now that coupler locked in there, in there like swimwear. And now we'll take that last little piece of the hose and it's just gonna pretty much connect these two. And we're definitely going to need some lube on this because I have a feeling this is going to be difficult. This is going to have to go pretty much pretty far on. I think it'll probably have to sit like that. So maybe up to here. Uh, I guess we didn't need lube. That actually worked easier than I expected. We did not need WD-40 or anything. Might need it on this side. Let's see if we can get in there. It's a very tight fit, so just be careful. And we're almost in. All right, so we managed to get that in. We're gonna tighten up these clamps. These are 12 millimeters, just like the rest of them. We're just gonna get them snug with this, and then we'll tighten them down after. All right, so they're snug right now. And that's how it's gonna look. We'll make our final adjustments. And like I said, we'll tighten it down by hand. But overall, pretty stout, pretty easy job. Two bolts, couple clamps, and that's all you really need to do. So we're pretty much done on this side. We'll tighten it all up, put that cover back on that goes to here. And we'll start working with the uh, other side and the uh, throttle pipe. All right, so now we're gonna make our way onto the throttle side of things and we're gonna install the throttle pipe and the other intercooler piping. So first things first, if you have this noise pipe here, you are gonna have to disconnect it here. I know a lot of people 
delete the noise pipe. So you might not have this, but for right now, we haven't deleted it yet. So we're just gonna have to get this guy out of the way. So it's gonna be one of those spring clamps again. Just get a little flathead, gonna pry up on it. All right, we'll set that aside because we are gonna have to re-tighten re that up to here. So we'll be able to pull that out. And then down low, there is a clamp. So the old throttle pipe will look exactly like this. Um, different, maybe different material and thinner and whatnot, but it has that pipe sticking out and that's where this pipe goes to and it's got one of those spring-loaded clamps So you're gonna have to take some pliers and clamp it together and remove it out of the way and that's right down here You might be able to see it on this side right there you Might need to get this intake system out of the way, but we're gonna try and see some in there if you have some long needle noses or if you have the spring clamp pliers, which I do at work, unfortunately I don't have them here. That'll make life so much easier. And then we'll start cranking on the rest. So unfortunately, there should be a bolt here, but there's not. It's just like the one up top, that 10 millimeter. It's not here. Um, I guess the previous owner or whoever worked on it prior left it out. So you won't, you'll have to take that out, or we won't. And now we can take this whole assembly out as one. We'll just disconnect it from the intercooler over here. Once again, that is one of those um, snap clamps. So we're gonna take a flathead and we're gonna have to reuse that clamp for the new collar. So as you can see, we got this whole piece out. We took it out as one in complete assembly. Of course, you could disconnect the little hose clamps and do piece by piece, but why not just take the whole thing out together? Um, so I had Wes off camera. He had to go up top and where the, this connects to the throttle body, I had him put a screwdriver in there and just kind of break the seal and that just was able to slide the whole thing out through the bottom. We are going to reuse this sensor right here. Um, and that's the only thing on this that we are going to be reusing. You're not going to need any grommets from these brackets because the new setup does not offer that. It's just this piece itself and just that. And this, see how it's oriented on angle? Now it's going to be straight up and down. I'm not sure if that means anything, but either way, it's still going to read properly. Um, but as you can see, this is more like a cylinder straight through. This is almost kind of like, almost like narrowed together, um, which is creating a little distortion in the, the way that the air flows. So this being a little more hollow and cylinder-like is going to free up some boost and definitely give you that throttle response. So we just put the sensor in. Now we're gonna pretty much do the reverse procedure and start installing the new parts. So we just went ahead off camera and put the whole throttle pipe in along with the couplers and the clamps and everything like that. We didn't really film it because one, it wasn't um, easily accessible to get a camera up in there and it's dark and it's pretty straightforward. So you guys should be able to do that. If not, I'll link down below step-by-step uh, -step that ECS provides so you can copy that and follow that step-by-step -step. Um, But yeah, we're super excited to see how this you know feels on the road. We're not gonna be able to take it out now It's too dark to get the camera and film um, But we'll do that in the next video kind of putting this thing to the test But without further ado, let's start it up and see what it sounds like not sure if those inlet pipes And throttle pipe will really change the sound. It's more gonna be just for the power and the response, but let's see Let's 
Sounds pretty wicked. Got that whoosh. Yeah. That thing sounds freaking gnarly. I think it's going to be awesome, you know, driving around town and releasing the gas pedal, you know, when you're boosting everything. So I think it's going to be fun. Um, but yeah, that will be in the next video. A lot of driving shots when daylight's on our side. But without further ado, that's pretty much just going to end this video. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, just drop them down below. And uh, that's pretty much going to end today's video. So we'll see you in the next one. Peace.